Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Um, I am actually right in the middle of doing some other testing for some other batteries. Um, and so I just decided to pull out this uh, Red Odeo uh, battery and uh, the 2000 watt inverter that I have. Uh, and I plugged in this 500 watt heater because it, it started just getting a little chilly in this basement. Um, and I figure, you know, I have the energy, why not use it? And it made me start to think like, okay, I still have on my computer uh, the, you know, the, the voltage curve, uh, pretty much the, the discharge curve of this battery because I just tested it. This is the trolling motor edition of the Red Odeo battery that just came out. You know, and I started thinking to myself, I was like, I wonder if I can test the voltage of this battery and look at that chart and see, you know, how much battery life I have left. That way I don't have to worry about having a shunt on there, something that's going to calculate it. You know, how, how much more energy am I going to have? And then, you know, so I looked it up and it was fine. But then I have another multimeter. And so I was like, well, I'll just test that one too to see what the difference is because two separate multimeters, one of them is very accurate and the other one, eh, I don't feel like it's that accurate. So I tested both of them and this is exactly why you should never go by the voltage of your battery when it comes to trying to figure out the capacity that remains in it. Okay, so first off, I got my ideal multimeter here. This thing is highly accurate. Um, I trust this for everything that I use. And so let's go ahead and test the voltage of this battery while it's running this heater to see what the voltage is. Okay, and I've got a voltage of 12.84. And that's on this multimeter right here. So let's go ahead and put that right over here. All right, and now I have this small Desmond multimeter. You know, this is really good when you're in a pinch, but I don't feel like it's as accurate. But this might be the only one that you have. And, you know, you have to go by what you, what you have on hand. So let's go ahead and check the voltage on this one. And this multimeter says 12.93. And, you know, you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, 12.84, 12.93, that's pretty close, right? No. Let's look at the discharge graph of the test that I did for this battery to see what the difference is from those two voltages. Okay, so here is our graph of the Red Odo trolling motor edition battery. It is a 100 amp hour battery and it's a 12.8 volt. It's your standard 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery. And we said that the ideal multimeter measured this at 12.84. So let's try to find 12.84 on this graph, which was probably, uh, let's see, right here, 12.84. And what you can see below that is that there were, there were 77.35 amp hours drawn out of this battery already. So there was only 23 amp hours left. Now, if you were to say, okay, let's use that other multimeters measurements, and it was 12.94, no, wait, it was 12.93. Let's go ahead and find 12.93 and see what the difference is in amp hours. And right there is 12.93. So you're seeing 66 amp hours uh, of withdrawal. So I mean, we're talking a 10% battery loss just from the, uh, the type of measurement that you took. Okay, and you're probably thinking, okay, 10%, I can live with that, you know, that's no big deal. Well, what if you were measuring it between, like one of your multimeters said 12.91 and one said 13. So let's go ahead and look at the difference in that range. So 12.9, one would be right here and you're looking at 70 amp hours taken out of the battery so you have 30 remaining now what if the other one measured at 13 so 13 would be oh my gosh here
at basically 45 amp hours taken out of the battery. So there's 55 amp hours left there. So 30 amp hours left compared to 55 amp hours left, that's 25 amp hours. That's a quarter of your battery that is just magically gone depending on what kind of, uh, what kind of multimeter that you use and what it, it, what it thinks the voltage of the battery is. All right, so I really hope that I made it clear why you should not take voltage as an indicator of capacity for lithium iron phosphate batteries like this red Odeo right here. You can't, you can't judge it depending on if you have a very, very accurate multimeter or a multimeter that you got at Harbor Freight for $15. There's going to be a difference and you just don't know what the true voltage is if you have you know, a, a lesser expensive multimeter. It could be off by almost a tenth of a volt. And again, you think a tenth of a volt, no big deal. A tenth of a volt for a lithium iron phosphate battery can be up to 25% of the capacity. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, if you want to look into these uh, two items that I used to kind of test this, uh, I'll have those in the description. Again, thanks a lot for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.